Two and a half hours drive east of Melbourne, roughly the distance from London to Cardiff, lies the historic township of Walhalla. This was one of Australia's richest towns and home to more than 4,000 people following the discovery of gold in the area in 1863. Life in Walhalla was tough though, with miners forced to endure fires, floods and disease. But the lure of gold made this mountain outpost a vibrant place with shops, breweries, churches, its own newspaper and 15 hotels. One of which, the Star Hotel, has been lovingly restored by owner and local tour guide Michael Leaney. How significant a role did the Star Hotel have to play in Walhalla in the 19th century? Well, the Star Hotel was one of the first hotels to be built in Walhalla. It was built in 1873, and it was the only hotel to survive the gold era. Most of the, most of the other ones closed in 1914 when the mines closed, but it lasted up until 1951 when it was unfortunately destroyed by a fire. It was um, very much a social centre. I mean, everyone enjoyed a beer in those days, and uh, being located at the junction in Walhalla, it was um, one of the grander buildings with a very ornate ironwork veranda. Now, if one wants to have a good time here now, what are the kind of things one should be doing? Well, there's certainly lots to see and do, and uh, one of the main things I always recommend people to do is to go and do a tour of the Long Tunnel Extended Gold Mine, where you can actually go and see the original gold workings, because that's basically what Walhalla is all about, is gold. Let's go and do it. Okay, no problem. <laughs> Michael, these look a bit rudimentary. What are they for? Well, this is a hammer and tap. This is the tap. Yeah. The guys used to hold this against the rock. Okay. All right? And this was how they used to drill. One of their mates used to come and bash it on the end. And yes. between each whack, you'd turn it a quarter of a turn. Yeah. And then I'd hit it again. Of course, this was a very dangerous thing to do. Because if I missed, you'd lose your wrist. If it was down lower, it could whack you in the knees. Or if it was up higher, it would get you in the head. Okay, so after they've bashed it in, they've created a hole. Like this one up here. And you can see the tap's actually gone right into the rock. They then pull it out. They stuff the hole with black powder. This was pre-dynamite. Um, so they put um, gunpowder in, put a fuse in, light it. They do a runner out of the mine as quickly as they could. The thing would go kaboom. They come back in with a wheelbarrow, shovel all the dirt into it and take it out and they repeat the process. How long did it take them to get this far? Well, this is about uh, 115 metres and it took three and a half years. So it's a very, very slow process. And how far did they go in the end? They went to a total of about 300 metres. It took them another six years to get there. Let's go and have a look. Okay. Whereabouts are we now then? Well, this is the main chamber in the mine. This is where they had all their steam equipment. So they had boilers in here, they had winches, compressors, etc., to run all the, um, the mine shafts and the adits that are below us. We've, we started here and we've just walked into here. And below us is over a kilometre of mine workings, which is about 10 football fields. How did they get down there? Well, they had um, a major like elevator system and winching all the way through. There was an incline shaft that uh, basically um, intersected the whole lot. And this grey area represents where all the gold came from. So there's about 72 kilometres of tunnels beneath our feet. The lower levels were about 47 degrees centigrade. Very hot, very humid, but the water that was pouring in was coming in at about 3 degrees centigrade. So you could be working up to your knees or up to your thighs in, um, uh, in cold water and then you're in, you know, tropics in your chest. So no wonder they got lung diseases. It was a, a major problem for them. Did many men lose their lives down the mines? Well, yes and no. There actually weren't that many accidents in the mines here, but everyone basically died because of it. Due to um, lung diseases and uh, silicosis, it basically... If you worked in the mine, it was going to kill you. And so therefore, you know, in our cemetery, it's full of the miners that worked in the mines. When you go and walk up in the cemetery, the things that are nice about it is that, you know, you've got some really ornate um, uh, headstones, but it also gives a real insight into what life was like and, you know, how tough life was with over 1,100 people buried into it and being teared up the side of a mountain. It's quite unique. And I suppose after a hard day down the mines, the guys would have uh, gone and got beer at the end of the day. Certainly. A beer sounds like a good idea, and why don't we have one now? Let's relive those days. OK. With all the history and mixed fortunes of this town, you'd expect to find a few restless souls knocking about in the afterlife. Well, if you believe in the paranormal, you might anyway. And Walhalla has its own ghost tours and its own spooky tales. 
So tell me a bit about the ghost tours. Well, ghost tours operate every weekend in Walhalla and basically they go to the historic sites in Walhalla like Windsor House and they go up to the mine and basically you're told all the tales of what it was like in the past and who kind of like lives and survives as the, the, the spirits of the past in Walhalla now. It comes down to whether you believe or not. Some people go on the tour and they're totally freaked by it, whereas other people come out from the tour and say, well, you know, it's just a story. It's just stories of the past. And why do the ghosts like Walhalla so much? Well, I suppose it's because of our cemetery. It's been a bit bizarre up on the side of the mountain and, you know, it's a dark and scary kind of place at night and very quiet and the spooks kind of take over. And have you ever had any kind of paranormal experience yourself? No, no, not while I'm sober anyway, no. While Hallis not just a fantastic place to visit to take in the history and heritage, it also offers many other activities. From cross-country skiing, tobogganing and horse riding, to white water rafting, four-wheel driving and fishing. And it's also the beginning of the Australian Alps walking track. And if that leaves you out of breath, simply sit by the river with a picnic and soak up the idyllic beauty of these mountains. Mm -hmm.